All right, guys, welcome back. This is part three, the final part of our second slope deflection method example problem. Um, just for a quick recap, this is exactly where we left off, but this is all the work we did in the last two videos, starting with this uh, statically and kinematically indeterminate beam. Basically, we want to draw the shear force diagram, Benny moment diagram, and solve for the reactions in this video. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to set up the shear force and Benny moment diagrams. And now let's plot what we can. So we do know that we have positive shear here right at the left-hand side of this first span, so basically right at the very beginning of the beam. Um, so let's put this about right there. Let's say that this is 19.642. We know the shear at the, the, the right-hand side of the span or just to the left of point B, however you prefer to think about that. Um, so that is going to be down here at about that height more or less and so this is going to be negative 30.3571 kilonewtons all right and actually because this is a bit of a blown up diagram I'm just gonna move this over so we're right in the middle there um, the the shear just to the right of the point B or basically on the far left hand side of this part of the span however you want to talk about that that is 59.8214 kilonewtons that's positive so we're gonna be up there somewhere so that will be 59.8214 and then here at the very other end we're getting negative 40.1786 all right so let's use our knowledge of how to draw shear force diagrams to uh, to basically fill out the rest of the points so we know that when we have a span here that, uh, that has no distributed loads on it or anything this point that this shear force is going to remain uninterrupted or basically constant until we hit that point load the same thing is the happening on the other end of this point load. It's constant until we hit it. And then basically right at that point load is we're getting a jump. Now where we get these jumps, this the magnitude of the jump is going to be equal to the magnitude of the point force. And if you have 19.642 minus 50, you actually get negative 30.3571. So that's kind of cool. That is what we, um, th that lines up with basically what the points that we've already plotted. Here we're getting another jump. Um, this is going to be due to the uh, this is going to be due to the the roller reaction at B, and as you go left to right, a point load that's pressing down is going to make you jump down. Um, so if you're jumping up immediately, that means that the orientation of that point load, which is basically just caused by the roller, um, is is oriented upwards, and uh, the magnitude of it is basically this this height, um, and so that'll actually end up being the reaction at uh, at point B. But we'll get to that in a second. We'll just finish off drawing this. Um, we do know that where we have a, uh, a constant distributed load that our, our shear force drops linearly in that region and uh, the, total dis the, the total magnitude of the drop is the magnitude of the total force. So this is 10 kilonewtons per meter times 10 meters. Um, so that's a total drop in 100 kilonewtons and yeah, 59.8214 minus 100 brings us down right here to 40 negative 40.1786. So there we go. That is our shear force diagram. Um, one other thing that we're going to want to have on here is these distances. And so we can find those with similar triangles. Um, so if we do 100 over 10 uh, is equal to 59.8214 over x. Basically, what we're saying here is the total the total rise of this triangle. Uh, basically, I guess like that. The big triangles, uh, its um, its height is 100, its base is 10, and so if we nest this smaller triangle in here, its height is 59.82, and its base here is going to be x. And so basically, you're just going to find that that decimal place is going to move over just one point. So this is going to be five. Uh, 5.98214 meters and then this base in here is going to be 4.01786 meters and we also knew these bases in here this is 5 meters and this was also 5 meters alright so what we want to do now is we want to use those pieces of geometry that we have now to find the areas for each of these shapes and we'll be able to use those to draw the bending moment diagram. So, but before we use that, let's plot on our bending moment diagram the points that we already know. So we have at the beginning of the span here, basically in the far left hand side, magnitude of 44.643, but it's counterclockwise to the left of a virtual cut, making it negative. Um, so we'll drop this on here. Um, I think that'll be about right. So we'll say that this is negative 
44.643 kilonewton meters. Uh, the next point in here that we know is uh, we know at this point the magnitude is 98.214 kilonewton meters, and no matter which way we look at it, it's going to have a negative sign because if we inspect this side, it is clockwise uh, on the right hand side of a virtual cut. That's opposite the positive sign convention. And this one is counterclockwise on the left hand side of a virtual cut, which is also opposite the positive sign convention. So we get a negative sign there, a magnitude of 98.214. So we can drop that on as negative. 98.214. The other thing that we knew is that the moment here, MCB, is equal to 0 kilonewton meters, so that's going to drop us off right at the end, internal moment of 0. All right, so those are just three points on the bending moment diagram, but we do need the whole thing. So what we want to do is we want to take these areas as, uh, as the changes in magnitude as we go left to right from between basically this point and this point where we have constant lines, we get a nice linear change in bending moment diagram, and when we have linear changes in the shear force diagram, we get parabolic changes in the bending moment diagram. So starting out here, um, if we take negative 44.643 plus 98.2145, that's going to bring us up to a value here, um, which is 53, let's label this on, 53.5. 715. All right, now if we take this number, 53.5715, and we subtract the next area, since the area is on the negative side, so it's going to bring us down. Uh, we So we have minus 151.7855. Then yes, that brings us down to 90, negative 98.214. Awesome. So that's looking really promising that we've done this right so far. And then here, if we just uh, put on a little marker here. Um, basically, we have a positive area, so we want to increase with a parabolic shape. Negative 98.214 plus 178.92999. That's a lot of decimal places. Um, but that's going to bring us up to this value here. It'll be somewhere in that region, and it's going to be 80.71599, right? Just the sum of those two numbers. It's going to be a nice parabolic curve if I can draw one. And then we have this area, so this we have to subtract it. So we have 80.71599 minus 80.71599. Yeah, that brings us right down to zero. Awesome. So that looks exactly like we've done it right. Uh, if this ended up at a number that we weren't expecting it to end up at, then uh, would definitely be grounds for checking that out. Um, but now what we want to do is we just want to talk about we have, uh, the reactions. So we have a y. BY, no man, it's lagging, BY, CY, and we had MA, right? And if we just want to quickly go back to the original drawing, um, you can see here that we would have yeah, yeah, M, uh, a vertical reaction and a moment at the fixed end, and then just vertical reactions at the other points, uh, basically where there's rollers. So coming down here, um, if we just want to identify what direction that these reactions are oriented in, um, looking at this, if we look at point A first, A is like that connection like this, and we say we have positive shear. So the shear is going to be going down to the right of the virtual cut. And let's see if I can find where I, yeah, our sign convention thing. Um, so if we have a shear going down, then that means that basically the reaction has to be going up at that point. Um, so we're getting 19, what is that, 19.6 kilonewtons going up. Um, at point B here, where we have a point load, uh, as we're going from left to right, um, it, ju it jumps the shear force diagram down, and here it's jumping up, so we know that the orientation is upwards, and the the magnitude is just the sum of, the, or is the total amount of jump, so it's just 30.3571 plus 59.8214, and that gives us about 90.2 kilonewtons and that's upwards uh, for the orientation of that reaction. And then at CY we have a negative shear so if we inspect this with a virtual cut taken just to the left of this end of the beam basically so we're like that. We have negative shear so it's going opposite the positive sign convention which means that the reaction has to be counteracting that so basically in this case the reaction would be going up so CY is 40.2 kilonewtons going up and then lastly, for the moment at A, we have a negative internal moment. So we draw it on opposite that positive sign convention. So it's going to be going like that, which means that the reaction moment is equal and opposite going the other way. Um, and so that is counterclockwise. And we had a magnitude of 44.6 Q. 
kilonewtons, and boom, we got it like that. So there are our reactions. Got our shear force diagram, bending moment diagram. Um, guys, if you watched all three videos, thanks a lot, and I really hope that this helps uh, clear up any questions you might have about how to use the slope deflection method.